Before we get started, I am happy to inform I finally caved and joined PPA. PPA, as most of you know, is Professional Photographers of America, one of the most widely known and reputable organizations for us photographers here in the state. So if that's something that has interested you in the past, hooked you up with the link in the description so you can consider joining today as well. Mm, 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 mm. So good to be seen and it's even better to see what's going on. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Looking mighty spiffy today, I might add. If we're uh, getting to know each other for the first time, my name is Francis and I'm a photographer videographer based out of sunny San Juan, Puerto Rico. So if you're into photo and video, this is definitely the channel for you. So stick around to the end to see if you get any value out of this video. And if you do, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you. So I wanna preface this video by saying this is me basically paying it forward, right? Yesterday, actually two days ago, I saw a more than one hour long tutorial on the ins and outs of street photography by none other than Jason Vong and a Professor Hines collaboration. They got together and did a 101 essentially of all about street photography, which is also my jam. So I whipped out my popcorn. I enjoyed the crap out of it. And I think that if you love street photography to the fullest as well, you definitely want to check that video, which I will also link in the description. And you definitely want to watch that after you watch this one. The reason why I'm shouting it out is because I learned an intricate detail of subject masking within Lightroom. And before we proceed, I definitely encourage you to download the latest version of Lightroom, whether it's CC you use or uh, classic, whatever the case may be, it really doesn't matter. This feature is available on both platforms. So I learned something about subject masking that was right under my nose the entire time and didn't even know existed up until 48 hours ago. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into Lightroom CC, which is what I use and get to work. So a little uh, context for the image that we're gonna be using. This is actually mom um, paying her respects for her mother, my grandmother, of course, uh, that we lost a couple of years ago. So this is a, uh, an emotional picture, but at the same time, it's the perfect one to use for today's uh, tutorial, for the sake of it, at least. And so uh, this is a final image. As you can see, it's beautiful. Um, it came out great in Lightroom and uh, you can appreciate it on my Instagram in case you wanna follow me there. Uh, Francis Alvarez Photography. I'll go ahead and link it for you guys right here. So without further ado, I definitely want to go ahead and um, reset the edits on this so that we can start from scratch and uh, show you what it is that uh, we want to do today. So that's the original. Um, as you can see, the sky was pretty blown out. But um, today's uh, focal point is going to be all about the subject itself. Um, and by subject, it's in this case, obviously, it's my mom, an individual. But this is probably going to apply to food and product and everything that you sort of want to single out. So without further ado, let's uh, hide on over and hover to this uh, button right here. This icon is obviously your masking. Um, if you are brand new to Lightroom and have not used this feature, this is definitely going to blow your mind because the AI on this is absolutely phenomenal. It's not quite perfect, which is why these following buttons that I'm about to discuss exist, but we'll get to that eventually. So what we wanna do is select subject, right? And uh, the AI is gonna do its thing right now. And you know for a fact that it's gonna uh, go ahead and choose the flowers as well, because I've obviously edited this image previously in its entirety. And I don't want the flowers to be part of this, um, this subject, right? The mask itself. And so what I wanna do is bring your attention now to these two buttons that populate. This is the add and subtract the button. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb that, and say that for most of us, we will always choose the subject, uh, the subtract button because um, the AI definitely tends to lean towards selecting something that initially does not want to be part of the subject. In this case, it applies to the flower. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the subtract button and that's gonna open another panel of masking. So what I want to do and what I prefer to use first and foremost is the brush, right? So that's going to open a brush tool for me, which I'm going to drag all the way over here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And because I don't want the flowers to be part of that subject mask, then I will gradually and easily just brush it out. And as you can see by the, um, the icon on the right hand, top right hand corner, the mask is now slowly and steadily fading so it does not become part of the mask itself. As you can see right here, it's uh, almost entirely gone. Let me give it one last brush. And there you have it. 
that's actually the uh, quick tutorial that I wanted to show you guys in the event that you have been subject masking and inevitably, um, you know, conforming to what the AI does for you, you could actually take it a step further. Um, the there are so many options that you can use. I usually have the brush because sometimes I do want that little extra, sometimes I don't. But in the event you want to be, you know, sort of lazy about it, you can always choose a radial gradient. As uh, most of you guys know, I love it as well. And just select the flowers and make sure they, they're feather out entirely. So that's another way of doing it. Um, that's basically the tutorial for today. I wanted to make it quick and uh, right to the point because this is obviously uh, in conjunction with the masking itself, a game changer when selecting your subject mask. So there you have it. I hope you got a little something out of your video and the next time you're editing your pictures, this definitely speeds up your workflow and makes it a hell of a lot better. If uh, you got some value out of this video, stick that thumb you know where. And uh, again, if uh, you want to stick around, hit the subscribe button because I would love to have you. A shout out to uh, Kenny and Jason for making a, also a video. Now it's time to watch that. And before I let you go, I will have you know, I just got this bad boy right here. This is the RF 70 to 200 uh, F 2.8, which I purchased specifically as it pertains to my future wedding photography event. So if you want to catch the real world review with some sample images, stick around. You definitely don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for watching. I value your time as much as I value mine. So I will see you guys in the next video.